Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Poor Choices Show, Episode 7, with me, your host, Chris, and my co-host, David. You want to talk about some wedding stuff and drink some beer? I do. Oh, damn it, it went on my computer. So what is your beer of the week this week, Mr. David? I have. It's called Velvet Bubble Lord by Flying oh. Monkeys Craft Brewery. I've heard of Flying it, Monkeys. That's good yeah, stuff. I've, I think I've had some of their stuff. Never had nor heard of this. It is, the description says, fresh blueberry puree and citrus lemon verbena flow with velvety bubbles and fruity magenta buoyancy with tart Gamay quips in and tannic Pinot Noir repartee. <laughs> what the David, fuck is this? David, David, David. It's a blueberry sour. Perfect. That's all we needed. I was can we see the can? To, we can see the can. Oh man, that's like some like yellow submarine beetle trippiness. This is what going I was trying there. to read. If anybody wants to screenshot that and try to say half the words that are in there, or define them because you the lost me. What the fuck me. is repartee? Mm-hmm. Closing with acidic floral whispers. Well, if you don't feel and taste all of those words that I've never heard of, then they did not do their job. So I like I like this. Look what they put on the can here. If you can, can you the see a little it? flying monkey? No, there's a little saying above flying. What's it say? There you go. Can you Blueberry? see it? No, it says normal is weird. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Velvet. I like bubble. that too. What a name. Well, Strong give us a taste. Beer. We're waiting. I'm letting, I'm trying to let my barm die down here. Ah, uh, your got, barm. Like, three quarters. I guess I'll go ahead and take a sip. Let's see. It's very bubbly. It's got a good nod to his head, like he's enjoying it. It's good. I, mm-hmm. Again, it's it's a sour, so it's got to it's gotta suck for me to not like it. Okay. It's good. I don't know the, uh, I don't know that an adjective exists to describe it. Not the flavor, but the, the feeling. Like, it's bubbly, but it's not like. It's like bubbles. You know when you, your mom goes to the store and she buys you bubbles and she brings them home, and it's like the what? off-brand ones. Wait, so wait, you wait. blow them and they like oh, okay. pop immediately. Okay, those like kind they of don't bubbles. Go, okay. They don't go like, you know, floating in in the abyss for like Dollar Tree for bubbles. A, yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of like it's like it's like the Rose Art equivalent of bubbles. <laughs> You're like, mom, I wanted art. I wanted Crayola, but you get the bullshit Rose Art. It's like that's like I the taste. Thought of Rose Art since the nineties. <laughs> Since your mom got a bad paycheck when you were first grade, yeah. That's right. But it's like that. Like the bubbles, it's like very bubbly for like a split second. How about out of out of 10? Give it an eight. Eight and a half. Oh, so pretty flavor darn wise, good. Flavor wise, yeah. Flavor wise is great. It's just, it's, okay. a, it's a weird like bubbly then not kind of. So maybe all those words they were talking about, they just meant Trying it's to describe the way. Bubbly. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't really know what to say and it sounds like they didn't really know what to say. Okay. But eight, eight and a half. We'll give it beer. eight and a half. Yeah. Drink it again. I'm, I'm going to drink it again. Nice. Okay. All right. How Very about good. you? What do we got? Um, I have a, it's called Bears on Rampage. Bears on a Rampage. Sounds dangerous. Once again, I am brought to you by Hidden Springs Ale Works. I've been on their. They ain't going to be hiding a whole lot longer. Their train for the past, what, three episodes now. Um, It is a sour ale with strawberries, blueberries, honey, and vanilla. So there's your bears on a rampage. Bam, I think bam, I might bam. have had that one when I was there. Oh, really? Yeah. It sounds well, let's give her a taste. Let me, let me know. Mm. Mm. Sounds like super, a nine. Nine and a half. Super strawberry. Okay. So maybe like a 9.3. On the back is the blueberry. I could not tell you where the honey and the vanilla are in this. Um, on a scale of sour, when it comes to sours, that is tart. Tart. Um, but it's also really good. It's really good. Where are we putting it? Uh, Ooh, high enough to take my, another sip. Man, my butt cheeks are puckering. Um, I'm going to be right with you. I'm going to give it an eight and a half out of 10. It's, no, I'm mad it's, at it. it's good. Um, but it is tart. I love the, I love the tart too. I love that. I mean, you know me, I'd take my <laughs> shot of vinegar every day. I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, I could see myself really enjoying it after I've like already been drinking 
And it gives me like that little bit of like, oh, I can taste again. You know, you've yeah, been drinking, you can't taste yeah. anything anymore. Yeah. I think it would give me that little extra, that little edge. Um, okay. So, bears so on a rampage. Half? Eight and a half. Yeah. It's good. Okay. So, Very I saw good. when when I was beer shopping, um, they have like Warhead Sours. It's like Warhead so I almost, brand. I almost bought some. Um, yeah. And then I realized it's going to be terrible. It's going to be really bad. That's what I figured. Yeah. There's, there's no way it's going to be good. And then, you know what else I saw I meant to send you a picture of was the beer we had at Broken Barrel that you introduced me to Sours to. It was like a, little, a queen cherry. Like a, yeah, it's just like a little painting of a queen or some historic something or other. And it came in it. a bottle, correct? Yeah, they had singles and they had like four or six packs or something. I uh-huh. almost got it, but I was like. Oh, so you found it? Yeah, it was at Total Wine. So we went to this bar, the Broken Barrel. Um, and yeah, introduced David to the sour and a little reluctant at first, like, uh, you know, I just want to stick to what I know. Just, I, I just don't, want a couple I don't think it was that. I, I think it was just, you had said, have you ever had a sour beer? And I was like, I've never even heard of that. And you were like, let me show you. And then one turned into like, we, eight, so, and it was like $120 a piece. It got Jack to later. the point where, we, yeah. So it got to the point where we said, can we get one more? And they said, you bought them all. Yeah, that's right. We, that's we right. literally depleted their stock because we sat there for three hours and drank 10, 11 apiece of these yeah, sour beers. That's right. He had never had one and fell in love, and I already love sour beers. And, and it was it, like cherry or something. It was, it was a I very delicious beer. Yeah. And it was like football Sunday, and it was just, you know, it was a match made in heaven. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't think it was so much reluctance as it was just I had never even heard of a sour beer. Yeah. And it was like, Go Let on. me try. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Try Continue. anything once. Well, why don't we talk about uh, your and attire. I's attire a little bit. Attire. Why don't you talk about it? I've been doing nothing but thinking about it for the thinking last. Thinking about it. Well, let me move over a little on the camera. Uh, David and I both have some nice ties on. Very, very uh, dapper looking gentlemen right now. Um, so this Saturday, David will be getting married. Yeah. So, so. I'll give a little bit of background on the the craziness that's going to ensue, and then I'll let you touch in and fill fill in the rest. Um, okay. So David was living over in the area I live in in Florida on the East Coast. Um, booked a wedding venue with his future wife. Um, got everything set, settled. Everything you can think of you need for for the wedding, they got it all taken care of. Um, and David got himself a new, better paying job. Congratulations. Moved to the west coast of Florida for said position, um, but wedding is over here two and a half ish. If there's traffic, three and a half ish hours away, um, where there's no longer a house for himself or family members or animals, several animals um, to stay during this three four day festivities that are about to ensue um, here in the next day or two. How'd I do? You did pretty good. We'll give you a like an eighty percent ish. Oh, deal. I'll take a B. So you, I didn't want to like divulge too much of your personal. No, no, no. I'm just, what's I'm, going I'm on? Going, I'm going accuracy. Okay, okay. So you accentuated a bit on the everything was done and taken care of as far as the wedding. Well, as far as pretty you much, had a pretty venue much booked, a, pretty much a contract was signed and a first payment was made. We still had to travel back for yeah. Mm-hmm. Non-refundable, granted, like twenty percent of the total cost. Okay, okay. So we still had to travel back for wow something. We were there. I think we were there for the food, the menu tasting, the dessert tasting. We had to come back for one thing, but then all all the other stuff, like all the travel arrangements, the hotel arrangements, uh, finalizing floral finalizing music, finalizing guest lists, finalizing seating, right. alcohol, everything else has been done over here. Well, and to, to talk about the venue a little bit before you continue is like in the area that I live in and that David was living in, I would never picture they could even find a venue that looks like this in this area. It is the, it is so gorgeous. Um, if, if he wants to, maybe he will or he won't um, post, you know, maybe some, some pictures of the venue or the events um, or, you know, just a few pictures on the Poor Choice Instagram just to kind of show you guys what, what happened this weekend. Um, and, well, we, and ha- we have on, I guess, preliminary plan for you to get some inside scoop 
POV recording. Yeah, so is right. so you guys are going to have the pleasure of um, little little uh, interview Grusman POV, Kurzman yeah. POV um, during the reception. That is of of me going around do, doing some interviews, doing some just some videos of hopefully some behind the scenes stuff. That obviously when you're at a wedding with there's going to be over a hundred people at this wedding that David obviously won't be able to see and hear everything. So I really want to and same with his wife, future wife will be. I want to bring them. Here's right. everything that was going on, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, same. And that's still, she's in the next room watching some TV, so I don't want to be too loud and have her hear. But... <laughs> what are you guys saying? <laughs> right, right. I heard. I wanted to be a surprise. Wedding? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the other hard part is um, I, I was, I don't have like, um, I don't have like any AirPods. Um, so all I have is like my hardwired headphones to my iPhone. So maybe by next week, I'll... Which are we discussed the better option quality-wise anyway? Well, I, or, you know... you know I, what they might have? You could always bring your adapter and they might have a little mini USB that doesn't need to be powered externally and you could just no, use that. My thought was I don't want her to see me walking around with a big, uh, like, you know, with a string right. headphone in going, I don't think ex- she's what the heck's he doing? be paying any attention to... So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do to make it yeah. to make it as a uh, as uh, inconspicuous as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm excited. So you guys, a little bit of content coming your way, um, kind of a little some behind divulge, the scenes, yeah. some behind the scenes, a little bit in the life. Um, maybe not the real life, but that day is real life, especially for that guy. Real um, and the rest of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's hence the the attire, the ties, and uh, and we just kind of wanted to keep this themed about what's coming up in a couple of days here that's been talked and worked on for the past year, year and a half, easy. Um, everyone's chomping at the bit. I mean, parents, friends, family, it's it's all coming to fruition in the next next day or two. People are flying in, driving in. It's, it's going to get wild. It's going to get wild. So I know you mentioned dogs possibly being a part of the ceremony have you guys decided anything along those yeah, lines I think, I think they're they're gonna be we just she's got a she's talking to someone about we're talking about trans- four dogs by the four. way four transport yeah but only 15 legs <laughs> that so, is correct that yeah, is correct take it where you can get it yeah yeah so yeah we're gonna they're gonna be there whatever whatever that whole thing is but she's supposed to be talking to people for transporting because they can't stay the whole time so from ceremony back to the house Cause that's, Got it. And that's a lot to ask someone. Like, hey, uh, can you I take know you're these here four for dogs? Wedding, but well, not even just that. Like, I know you came all the way here for this, but you mind taking them back? Granted, it's like ten minutes down the street, but yeah, it definitely is. I mean, and to be fair, I'm sure at that point, once the the ceremony itself is over and the reception's about to begin, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll be off taking pictures anyway, so there'll yeah. be some time to kill. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure there'll but, be plenty of people going, absolutely. Oh, the dogs. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a handful and they get all. If I didn't you know, have to be in pictures, like I'd, I'd I take like one her. of your SUVs in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, I know. You'd, you'd leave with Belle and probably wouldn't see it. I at the, probably at the wouldn't reception. come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to the beach, Belle. Come I, mean, on. I was just going to say that. I'd send you selfies of me and her at the beach, yeah. you know, in my tongue suit. hanging out. <laughs> and Belle sitting next to you with your tongue hanging out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, it's still planning stages, but it's, we have the idea, we just got to final. I know we're running out of days, but I'm just so like. Sold them, sold them between <sighs> whatever, yeah, yeah, you're getting there. Yeah, what what did P.O.D. say? Uh, oh no, that was last day. Horrible reference. I was looking for something first day of the rest of your life. P.O.D. Oh. said, they said last day of the rest of my life. I wish I would have known because I'd have kissed my, yeah, yeah, horrible, horrible hmm. reference. First okay. day of the rest. I don't know. Tomorrow never dies or something. <laughs> Whatever. Live like you're dying. Who's that? Alan Jackson? Who sings it? No, that's. It's a. Uh, I said no, so like I knew who it was. It's that uh, other one. It's Tim McGraw. Is it? It was a Kenny Chesney. Mm. I I know how to find out. I got Alexa. It. Who sings "Live Like You Were Dying"? It's Tim McGraw. I'm not sure which room she's talking out of. Nah. So, I wanted to touch on the attire a little bit, um, especially the attire or part about it. It probably doesn't, but do you recognize this tie if in any shape, form, or fashion? It is a gold and black striped tie for nobody watching. My 
first thought was that you were going with how you're a Ravens fan, but you're representing Steelers colors. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and think about every time I've ever seen you in a tie, which... It's a good train to go down. I feel that's the only one. It's yep. Raven, and there's not another one coming. It's either going to be Easter, which I don't think it was because you wore purple. Okay. And that, okay. I don't think that goes with purple. Is that correct? Am I one mm-hmm. for one? It's correct. Um, don't think I saw you high school graduation. So I'm gonna, um, probably gonna not. Going to cut that one out. Actually, I almost wore that tie. I have it still. <laughs> I still have that tie. I almost wore it. Uh, the only other thing I can think of, I feel like I just lost it. Where is it? Hold on. Is the Metro Christmas Party. That's a good guess. That's a really good guess. Um, So here's the funny part about that. I also still have that tie. <laughs> okay. And I almost wore it, and I went, no, this one's older. So, so I wore this I one. So have I seen you in that tie? Um, Probably, but... If you're going with probably... But wouldn't have, like, noticeably I'm, remembered it. The eighth grade dance. That's really close. So it's ninth grade homecoming. Okay. I was hesitant so, to go eighth grade dance because I feel I don't like think that tie we would have ties. been... Well, not just that, but I feel like that tie would have been way too big for you. Yeah. At the eighth <laughs> well, grade the, dance. To be fair, I, I, still, I, I know the pictures I'm wearing this tie in, and it's definitely like... I'm still like super small Chris with braces and like, you know, tiny kid. Um, so this would have been what two thousand and four ish, which I don't think I went to that homecoming. Ninth grade, I don't think so. Okay, well this is, I mean, there's I'm looking at the tie now, and that's the only time I've ever worn it. There's still stains on it. I mean, so you bought it for that? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So this is a a twenty year old tie that everyone is being graced with the presence with right now. So we're that old. Yeah, if that puts any perspective into it, ninth grade was 2004. I saw something the other day that said it was something like, so you know all the songs we reminisce on that came out like 2002, 2003 that we loved and we were like, yeah, let's party of these. So when those were new and we were jamming to those, this same time distance was songs from the 80s. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that, doesn't that hurt? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It does a lot. I mean- I get a lot of hurtful reminders um, at work and what I do with um, have a lot of the younger generation that work there with me. And I get a lot of reminders of, oh, my God, holy crap. Um, actually, you- today I was mentioning, um, do you remember Foursquare? Yep. On Facebook? So you would you say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, was, would- I was going even older than. Oh, and not, play, not the playing actual that game on the playground, but yeah, not the actual checked game. in places. So you would check in. Hey, Chris is at Best Buy, and you check yeah. in on Foursquare. And you could, and if you show checked in you, more than anybody else, you'd be the mayor of that place. You'd be the mayor of that place. Um, so I said, "Do you guys know what? Do you remember Foursquare or what Foursquare is?" And they actually responded with that response, which was, "Yeah, it's that game. You know, you hit it and this." I was like, "No, I said, no, it's you, I meant like uh, the the app or, um, you know, on on Facebook where you check in, and they're like." We were, we were like 10, 9, you know, we didn't have Facebook. And I was like, oh, mm, yeah. yeah, you're right. Because the whole checking in thing, it was, it, was a, it was a big thing. Like, I can check in and people know where I am. Yeah. It was huge. For, it wasn't that Before long. You it didn't any last. And you wanted people to know where you were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it didn't it didn't last a long time. But when it <laughs> first launched, it was like, it was huge. Oh, 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 the you're checked in shit. there. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, you're there? It's like, yeah, I'm there. Oh, well, I'm here. How long are you going to be there? Okay. And you could okay. you could create your own places. Create your own places, and most people use it for like that clout side of it. Like, hey, Chris checked into M and T Bank Stadium. Oh, Chris is at a Ravens game, and so it was before Snapchat where you could just go, yeah, hey, look where I am. You couldn't it let was, everybody uh, know with pictures. You had to yeah, let them yeah, know yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's good. So that's my yeah. old story of the day. That. Old man story. You gotta ask them if they know the origin of like rolling the windows down, or uh, oh, definitely not. I saw I saw one the other day that was like, "How do you answer a phone?" Yeah, or like, so act our like generation you're would on do the this, phone. yeah, and they'd go like this, and they'd go like this, yeah. right, right, right. It's wild. Or have you seen? Um, there's another one where they had um, <laughs> their kids use like a rotary dial for a phone. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, dial this number." <laughs> it's very very entertaining. So anyone listening, you should should look that up. Uh, kid uses rotary phone for the first time or something. No, no what the fuck is it? Yeah. Very entertaining. It's very entertaining. Yeah, 
it hurts more and more every day. It's like every every time you got to fill out a form online, you're like, fuck it, you're, you start getting arthritis scrolling down the the fucking list to get your to your year. Well, we'll still we're still in a good frame right now in our mid thirties. I think in ten years is going to be that um that realization of health when you get to your mid forties and. Well, I already got to a that today when I was referred to a what's it like a orthopedic person. My shoulder's all broken. Okay. So I got to refer. I got to call them and make an appointment. Man. Yeah, but I mean, I, I meant more along the lines of need needing a new hip and not, not being able necessarily needing but, life alert and one of those little things on your stairs you know, that go up. No, I was more along the lines of you know colonoscopy is going to be coming up when you get to that forty range. Um, cholesterol medicine blood pressure um, so uh, that was my main reason for the visit to the doctor today because i had blood work done a couple months ago and he said your cholesterol is high so i had today mm-hmm. was my follow-up i had to get blood drawn last week to make sure it went down and it went down so i'm not too old but so you don't need you don't need any lipitor or anything right now no nothing yet that's good he told me that's good he told me that uh i don't need to set my tivo to little house on the prairie yet or don't not listen. I watched Little House on the Prairie when I was in elementary school. That was a great show. Or Guiding Light or Golden Girls all right, all right. Or, or just the Hallmark Channel in general. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to think back to everything. Or you're not ordering, like, um, you're not going to those, what was it? The the order TV QVC? show. Yeah. QVC. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And doing my crossword puzzles. And... Yeah. And ordering six of those court, court, quartz necklaces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not there yet. Well, uh, to be fair, I do have a, ongoing puzzle right now is that an old man thing to do i don't uh, think it is no because if it was an old man thing it wouldn't be ongoing for so long because you'd be more determined to get it done also oh, did puzzles younger too i think it's just something that people enjoy to do or they don't enjoy doing it and sounds like a justification for mm. old itis but it's a cool puzzle <laughs> <laughs> what is it uh, is it like sheep on a farm and or something, or is it like something actually cool? It's it's Hogwarts. Okay, yeah. See, that's cool. <laughs> it's a painting of Hogwarts. If it was like, like a, a big like Marlboro pack or something like that, I'd so be like, okay. You're probably kind of old. It's twenty eight by thirty two, big, it's three thousand pieces. Um, and it's like a pastel painting that's now been cut into a puzzle, and it is hard, but it is gonna be beautiful. So once it's finalized so come august i'll uh i'll show it to you on the podcast here because <laughs> it's like i'm at the point now where i have the sky to do oh and it's like that. and it's a cloudy but sunny sky so there's grays and yellows and reds and blues and and it's all just slightly off with each one like just a little bit because it's kind of almost like a sunsetish sun you know it's that dusk kind of time and it's like oof. you know if if you try hard enough you can make it fit. Be like, so, eh, clouds distort. Yeah. Fucking yeah. push well, it on there as hard as you can. It's, it's it all quite the same. It's quite the setup I got in here because coffee table obviously wasn't big enough for it. Um, So I had to go out and purchase a giant piece of cardboard that is the correct dimensions of this puzzle just so I can put it together. So I had to, I had to put this shit on the floor. Or just like if you're going to frame it, <laughs> you should have started so it, it, it will, in the frame. It will be framed um, and or just hung up as is because I did find some some pretty cool um, as opposed to just like the old like school. You, just, you glue kinda. it. Yeah. So I can flip it and then you just lay these adhesive pieces to it basically. Yeah. And I might just go that route to save some money. Um, but I we'll hope see. when you I hope when you flip it, the entire thing falls apart. So you have to start all over. No. So would I you, have, would you do it again or would you just be like, fuck it? No, I'd go jump off a bridge. Um, <laughs> I have several pieces of this cardboard. So what I'm going to do is lay a piece over top of it once it's completed. Yeah, flip it. And, and I get gonna, it. And then I'm going to put some clamps on it just in case. And then I'm going to flip it, then take off the clamps, then put the adhesive on it. So I've already thought, I'm not even done the puzzle. I already know how I'm going to keep it together. So You should start a business for like puzzle flipping. Like people that do that, like spend David, hours and months. And David, it's already a thing. Well, why don't you hire them? I thought you meant like an actual thing to like flip a puzzle. No, like if you got like an eighty year old woman that's like, I finished a puzzle, like you go to her house and you do it for her. No, nah, she's e- the even one if she who's orders buy... a big piece of cardboard, like she's not gonna be able to flip it. Well, you if you buy the the hodgepodge or the glue, like the typical puzzle glue, you don't have to flip it. You just brush it onto the front of the puzzle 
let it dry, and your puzzle's solid. Okay. But pictures I feel like to if go. you start that business and you, and you market to a like an assisted living facility, you could probably make bank. Not to take advantage of old people, but no, we'll see. Well, I'll look into it. <laughs> yeah. Puzzle flipping. Well, Hey, Sonny, you here to flip my puzzle? Mm -hmm. No, Grandma. (laughs) You said the sky is sunny in that puzzle. (laughs) I was trying too quick to get there. Um, So it's like a partly cloudy sky during sunset. 70% chance of rain in the afternoon. Well, speaking of sunny, have you ever heard of Sonny and Cher? Yep. Pretty popular couple. Mm -hmm. How about we talk about some other popular couples and do a couples draft? Sold. Real or fictional? Either or. Okay. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it either. I mean, I, I have I have my list of whether it was... I mean, if we did just real, I got two. Okay. <laughs> and That's I fine. just said one of them. <laughs> I have nine total and a mix. It's a mix, so. Okay. Um. Well, I went first last week with the blue draft. You did? Which means, David, you get to go first on the... Couples draft. All right. Well, in the couples draft with my first round pick, I'm going to take Romeo and Juliet. Oh, that's such a good pick. And I thought you were going to go that or another one. And I'm going to go the other the one. Other one. I'm going to go with Adam and Eve. Also on my list. Which, real or fictional, which is why I said either or, because I think that's a really good one. And Romeo and Juliet, also not real. So that one's definitively not real. Yeah. <laughs> right. In some people's <laughs> eyes, i.e. ours, the other one is definitively not real. That is correct. Um, so you went Romeo and Juliet. I went Adam and Eve. Who's your number two overall pick? Uh, so many places to go. All of them non-existent. I think with my number two pick, I don't know. What, what are you going to do? I have, I'm so ready for this draft. <laughs> <laughs> so ready. All right. With my, my second pick, I'm going to go with Marge and Homer Simpson. That's a really good answer. That's a really good answer. Um, my number two is going to be Bonnie and Clyde. I had that too. I think that's a just super popular, super just nostalgic. Just you think of a a couple, bam, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. Do you know who references themselves as Bonnie and Clyde? No. That would be my next pick of Jay Z and Beyonce. Oh, <laughs> not even on my list. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm really, not that was I'm the not, first thing I thought of. No. Nah. And then I couldn't think anymore, and that's when I mentioned fictional. Not even mad at it. So hey. with my third pick, I'm going to go with Rachel and Ross from Friends. So iconic. For people who watched Friends, obviously. Um, if you haven't, Rachel and Ross have an ongoing, for as many seasons as Friends is, uh, on and off. I love you. I don't love you. I'm with someone else. I'm not someone else. At the end, super happy ending. I'll take it. I'm not mad at it. It makes me want to take a direction that I didn't plan on taking. What am I on, okay. number four? You are on your fourth overall pick in the couples oh, draft. Oh, I don't... I can tell you right now, my next two are both fictional. Well, I lost you. Did you? Stand by. I'm going to take this time to show off my awesome banana shirt. Anyone wants to see it? It's pretty good. Okay. So just for a quick, quick reference, there's bananas twerking, there's one doing cocaine. Um, by doing, I mean snorting. Um... Let's see, there's a jacked one on steroids. There's a couple of them in a bowl of soup or milk, drinking beer. Uh, there's one that looks like Cheech from Cheech and Chong. There's just random baggies of, like, a white powder. I'll let you determine what that is. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. From the moment of hard frown. Say I had a clone. I knew that I'd be safe because I'd never be alone. An evil doctor shouldn't speak a lot about his feelings. My heart and my pain don't make me too appealing. I know Scott. Look up to me. Run the business of the family. Have an evil empire just like his dear old dad. Give him my love and the things I never had. Scott would think I was a cool guy. Return to the love I have. Make me want to cry. Be evil. I have my feelings too. Change my life with Oprah and Maya Angelou. But Scott rejected me. C'est la vie. Life is cruel, treat you unfairly, even so. My God, there must be, many me, you complete me. Just the two of us, you and I. I mean, it looks good. David's dangling his thing. Do you remember, I don't know, maybe you did or you didn't, younger doing the whole doi 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 doi, and people would like put it to their mouth 
and hold their pinky out. And, don't lay, don't lay, don't lay, don't lay, don't lay. So I found out when that was a, a big thing to do and everyone was doing it around school. It was doy, doy, doy. And I could do it without the hand in front of my mouth and just in my mouth. So here's my doy, doy, doy without my hand. Thank you very much. I am Chris, your host. I'll be here all night. Just sitting here recording. Okay. Cheers. Uh, let's see. Um, lost all I got is my Austin Powers wrap and my doy. And I can't, I can't think of anything else. Oh, he's back. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I did. Yeah. I did put on like a little bit of a performance while you were gone. So you might I, have to. I could keep see it you or doing edit something. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, just just don't delete. Like when you're like when you leave, don't be like, okay, I left, so I'm going to cut it. At least see what what's going on in there. What's going on behind the scenes? Like that time yeah, where yeah. you fell in your chair when you came back. Yeah. So with your fourth overall pick, who are you taking? Did you hear that? What is happening? I don't know, dude. dude. But this whole segment need, needs to stay in the podcast. Holy hell! Yeah. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> All right, with my fourth pick, yeah, in the couples draft, mm -hmm. I am going to take Shrek and Fiona. So that was on my list. That's a good pick. That's a really good pick. Old Shreky and Fiona. -y. What's your favorite Shrek movie? So to be a hundred percent honest, I think I've only seen the first one. Wait, what? No, 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 no. That's that's not true. Oh. I think I've seen Shrek two. So that is by hand by by far by the best. hands and knees. By hands, far, knees, down, that is the best Shrek movie is, is Shrek 2. What one was 2? Anybody wants to argue that, you know where to find me. Shrek 2 is where they go to Happily Ever Afterland, and they meet her parents, and the and fairy godmother's there. And yeah, 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 and Donkey and the dragon are, like, married at that point or something. P P Pinocchio is wearing a thong, that whole yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> so does that leave me my fourth pick as well? Yes. Yes, it does. I am easily going Jim and Pam from The Office. Well, I'm sure everybody else will appreciate that, but as you know, I don't watch The Office. So. Yeah, that's your loss. I mean, it was a um, several seasons build up, and then it just turned into beautiful, beautiful TV. So going Jim and Pam. Jim and Pam. Okay. My, with my last pick, I'm going to go with Mario and Princess Peach. Oh, that's really good. Now, did they ever actually like hook up and do the dirty? Or is it just always he has the to game. save her, but he never actually gets any action? He's kind of like friend zoned, and so the game's rated E for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I think that implies that they leave it up to your discretion on what happens in the end. I'm going Mario gets friend zoned, and he's just kind of. You think he when, saves when her she... ass from that big ass fucking dinosaur and just drops her off and goes, Dude. "Okay, you're on by eight. Tell your dad I said hey," and then fucking Pe drives off. Peach is at the bar. She decides to drive home. Cops pull her over. She calls Mario. Because she knows he's going to pick up. And he does. He goes, Yahoo! I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> and he picks her up because the cop was nice. And he said, If you have someone who can drive you home, I'll let you go home. But then when they get to the house, Peach goes, Thanks. And she goes in. So let me remind you, this dude lays pipe for a living. <laughs> can we just can we just at least think about that before he lets this fucking princess just say, To be Thanks fair. To be I'll give fair. You five stars. Being a plumber. I've uh, no one is in the world saying, What do you do for a living? Oh, I lay I pipe. I lay pipe. <laughs> it's an awesome answer and it's really funny, but I don't that see That would be anyone. his Tinder bio. <laughs> I lay pipe with my I brother. <laughs> dark, uh, two dark hair Italian. Yeah, got a crack brothers. that needs fixing. <laughs> pipe need laying. Um, okay, so Mario and Peach as your fifth overall pick. Oh, shit. Yes. I Okay, so with my fifth overall pick, I'm going with Jack and Rose from Titanic for my couple's fifth overall I, pick. I left that off the list because I already had like 13 at that point. <laughs> what, what was your other one? It was, I, I really hope you get it, um, it was Buttercup and Wesley. Oh, just leave him comments, anyone listening. Oh, it is. Um, it's from the movie The Princess's Bride. You want them to leave me comments? Yeah, for not knowing who Wesley and Buttercup are. For not knowing the Princess mm -hmm. Bride? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's here's my the rest of my list. It wasn't much. Um, oh, I thought actually, those were your last two. They, they were. So Wesley and Buttercup, which I didn't draft, and then my other one was Napoleon and Josephine. 
had the, well, well, I didn't have that. Saw that. <laughs> didn't write it down. I was like, that's a very iconic couple, and I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Um, but that was that was it. That was it. Shrek, Shrek and Fiona are on there. Um, Romeo and Juliet's on there, and the rest I picked. Yeah. So I had Harry and Jenny. I had yeah. Pete, Peter Parker and Mary Jane. That's a good one. Good and one. I had and I had Tarzan and Jane. Oh, that's a good one. But that's a really good one. Mario and and Peach were more to me. Okay, that was a good draft. I like that. That was fun. If you got, yeah, yeah. So I want to get back onto the wedding train with you, um, and I want you to, I want you to blindly rank something for me, and that something is these wedding scenarios at your own wedding. Okay. Okay. Are we personalizing be, this? No, 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 not at all. They're just general scenarios. Um, good, bad, in between. You got one through five. One being the most wanted scenario you want. Five being the least wanted scenario. Okay. I hope these are outrageous. Like Deion Sanders shows up, or like oh, I should I should have gone super crazy, or like uh, they're. I'd say they're in between now. Nothing like like that, but they're they're a little bit in between. Okay. Um, so number one is going to be a bride and or groomsman, bridesmaid or groomsman throws up at the reception, not makes it to the bathroom, but at the reception. Man, I don't I don't like this being number one because I don't know if this is the direction you're going. Like I'm talking like dance floor. Dance floor or at their table or five. Just you didn't just don't want that whatsoever. Let's okay. just say it's not all about me. Okay. Um next one is a song plays that the whole reception party sings together. A song comes on and all hundred plus people are belting this song. You uh you Sweet organize Caroline, I mean, whatever you can think of. You I don't organize know. this list well. Okay. Good. Because not now I'm scared. <laughs> I'll put it at Put it at two. Okay. And um, I, so let me give you a little bit of backstory behind that. Okay. Because a, that would be awesome. But one yeah. of my favorite wedding experiences is, I don't know if I told you about the time we were at Antonio's wedding, where I guess they were using one of their friends to DJ or something like that. And it was like their their first dance song. And like the equipment started fucking up. Like it started cutting out. But everybody knew the song so everybody oh, there started cool. singing it so like Aww. in like the 45 seconds before they got the music back up it was just like the 80 hundred of the guests singing the song for their first dance and it See, was that's like, almost even a better moment than yeah it just i was being... that's what i said like i would pre- yeah, like, you, don't, you don't go worthy. into it like yeah you don't go into it like wanting that but when it happens right. you're like that's that's better so like that gave me flashbacks of that but i don't know what else you're gonna say so i'm gonna put it at two a uh, two. Okay. Um, you sneeze mid. I do. I'm half tempted to put it at three mm-hmm. because you could play it off like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's really funny. So, like, it's not all bad because you get a chuckle out of the audience. Uh, yeah, just because I don't know where you're going next, go ahead and put it at three. Okay. Um, you kill it on the dance floor. It being the dance moves or Yeah. Like afterwards you're like, dang David, we saw you out there. Holy man, you you killed that that dance or that song or whatever you were doing as as no one else will get it as we refer to it as uh crazy feet. Crazy feet. Mm-hmm. But dang David, killed it out there. Do I do I put my fate in your hands and put that a four? I don't know. Do what you gotta do. Let's put it a four. Four. Let's see if you're um, a good enough friend to Set your boy up for success here. Uh, an aunt or uncle gets drunk and gets handsy with you or your wife. <laughs> I'm going to have to change that groomsman lineup. <laughs> well, number one. <laughs> what a wedding is it going to be, folks? <laughs> oh, man. See, what? you thought you thought about it too much. You thought I was going to be nice and, and then give you the... I didn't think about it too much. I feel like I thought about it the uh, appropriate amount and thought, he's on the list. It's funny he's high because... up on the list. He'll set me up for success. Well, I kind of, I kind of blindly did these because the rank I have them in typed in right now is I had Bride or Groomsman throws up number one, uh, you kill it number two. Wait, Uncle Bride or and Aunt? Oh, bri- okay, yeah, yeah. Uncle or Aunt gets drunk number three. Um, a song plays that everyone sings number four, and you sneeze mid I do number five. And uh, and I, I just kind of just took it as like let me just mix them up because they're like a mix match of each good and bad. So I wanted to just Trish. mess with you a little bit. Well, you did. I th- think job. I succeeded, yeah. 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 Uh, 
Not that we've done a ton, but I guess that's probably my worst one yet, huh? Wasn't great. Could have been better. Could have been a lot better. It could have been number five. <laughs> if anything, it'll be the opposite, and it'll be a certain groomsman getting handsy with anybody over the age of 50. I didn't say that. <laughs> and it's also not me he's talking about. Just to... They know who they are. <laughs> they know who they are. So just a quick question. Okay. If you could get married anywhere in the world, where would it be? And this isn't just like country, so not France, but yeah. like the Eiffel Tower in France. Or, um, yeah. Doesn't no restrictions anywhere I want. No, anywhere. Money is not an option if you could anywhere. Like on top of, you know, the Great Pyramids, or you know, on top of a vault, wherever you want. You have enough money to make whatever you want happen. But I want well, like I'm a not... specific location, not just like a country. It's really tough because there's so much you could do. Um, yeah. That's why when you had said about doing a draft for like wedding destinations, I was like, there's, you could say like 6,000 of them and they're all yeah. great. And but they're if all you good. Had, if you had one, where would it be? Oh, God. Um, eh. I don't think I'd get too crazy with it. Um, I think I would probably, it's a weird answer. It could be anywhere in the world. Um, I'd probably choose Westminster, Maryland, and have all my friends and family there, just because so I we, know they could. I, just because I know they could all attend, and it was where I grew up. So again, money's money's not an option. So essentially, you could pay for all our flights, pay for all our stays. You could pay our jobs enough to let make them let us take off to be there. All right. If I had to pick a route, like a anywhere outs, in the world. outside of the the destination, like um, regardless, I, you. All your friends, all everybody you want to be there is going to be there. No I would do. What. I would do a um, like a really just grass fields slash flower fields um valley in the Alps in the middle of the mountains with a big lake behind us, a big like that like aquatic aqua blue lake behind us, and just it's us in the middle and surrounding us is just fields of poppies and tulips and and then the backdrop is just mountains with snow on the on the ridges and yeah sounds cold no we're we're down in the valley it's like 70 70 degrees we're good okay all right i kind of i kind of knew you were gonna go that route because every time i ask I'd, you I'd, like I'd, if you could live anywhere it's like wyoming oh, or if i'm like another country that, that like would be my backyard or, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be if i could live anywhere i'd get so married in my backyard if, yeah okay i was gonna yeah. say if money's not an option you'd live there you'd want to get married that you wouldn't want to go to some other place and then i'd have arnold schwarzenegger officiating the wedding officiating <laughs> officiating uh he because I, I it'd probably be like in austria it'd probably be in that area why um, why arnold because he's from austria so uh, it'd be really cool <laughs> so if you had it in westminster who would you have officiate it uh some dude from a local dive bar because he's from there uh father art who <laughs> He was my priest as a kid. <laughs> I thought that was Picasso. <laughs> Father Art? Yeah. Da Vinci or whoever painted the Mona Lisa? Oh, wait, like someone who's not living? I could pick anyone that's ever existed? No, but you said no. Father Art. Oh, yeah, that was his name, like Arthur. Like, like Art. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was Art. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> He's not even a priest. He just goes by Father Art. <laughs> that's actually Bob Ross. <laughs> okay, Mike's, and we got, a happy little, we got a happy little bride and a happy little groom and... It's like Mother Nature's husband. Yeah. It's like Father Time's nephew. Oh, there you go. Father Time's <laughs> great uncle. <laughs> oh, shit. Father Arthur. I never even thought of it in that context. Fine. <laughs> His name's Arthur. Was, there, was he more like a watercolor guy or? <laughs> he was more He's of a pastel. Pastel, and, yeah. Yeah. Now, he was more crayons and uh, <laughs> color pencils. He was he was a very abstract individual. Yeah, he liked yeah. Plato. He wasn't very uh, <laughs> realistic. Oh, I get it. <laughs> he really, he really liked the Renaissance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Good question though. But yeah, so that's definitely what my... was the question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was stuck on Father Art. Yeah, yeah. So okay, money's not a, a, a an issue. I am in the middle of the Alps. Or okay, what if what and if money was an issue, Westminster, Maryland. Yeah. Can we get a uh, reception at Coconuts? It's an hour and a half drive just for a reception. Well, people are flying 2,500 miles to go to mine. Yeah, but if you're having a wedding, you're not going to make them drive 
hour and a half for a reception. So reception. I'm not making anybody drive anywhere. That's what the buses are for. Would probably be a big party tent back at dad's slash the neighbors who have like six acres. That should be the after party. All right. Reception would be at anyone from Westminster, Maryland listening, Joe Hansen. <laughs> I can tell you by looking at our uh, analytics that nobody in Westminster is listening, but we do have four downloads in Belgium. So I can't wait for that. I live in Westminster, <laughs> England. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, back to uh, relationship things. I have some things, and I want to know if they would be red flags to you or not. In a relationship. Correct. Looking Beginning to get of a relationship. into one. Yeah. I mean, just, you, would, you, would know these, you would know these things pretty early on. And okay. would that be a turnoff for you? Would you continue? Et cetera, so would et cetera. they be? A, so, okay. What extent of a red flag would they be? I just want to know whether they would be or not. I don't know. You have your own personal, you know, if you mark this many, I just want to know, would this go in the red column or the I don't care column? Okay. Gotcha. The first one would be doesn't like animals. Mm, no go. Not necessarily hates them, just has no desire to own them. But if I were to bring a dog home kind of thing, say we're dating and I and I brought a puppy home and they weren't about it, yeah, definitely not. Okay. The next one is doesn't return the shopping cart. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> they literally pay someone to do that, so I don't care. <laughs> so I didn't write it down, but I'm going to say it anyway. One of yeah. them was uh, like minute messes doesn't clean it up because they pay somebody to do that. Like, she made it. She's perfectly capable of doing it, but they pay someone to do it. Elaborate a little bit more. So, like... Give me an example. So, uh, I guess say you're at a restaurant and you, like, I don't know, you, you have, like, a one scoop of ice cream in a in a cardboard cup and it falls on the floor. Like, you could easily take, like... Oh, they know, leave six it there? napkins. No, they don't leave it there, but they're like... Hey, can you get this? No. Like like the server <laughs> comes by. Like it's it's more yeah, than no. you want to do, but it's not more than you should do. No, 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 no. You you dropped a whole scoop of ice cream on the ground, just grab your napkin or napkins and at least It would be like say it's like six six napkins worth. Like you're not going to get every drop of ice cream off the ground, but at least get the mass off of there and throw right. it back in the cup covered in napkins. Don't just leave it there. Okay. So, so no. Explain to me how that's different from taking, like, 20 seconds out of your day, maybe, like, 30 steps to put the shopping cart back. You ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> for someone that works in the customer service industry, now, to be you, fair, do not, I you always, do not have 20 seconds. To be fair, I always put my shopping cart back, but if I was but with if they somebody, don't, you're like, man, whatever. I wouldn't care. Okay. But if it, was the, if it was the made a mess and just, like, left it, Okay, that's different. That's different. I would be like, mm. so it, it's not again. It's not like leaving it. You're just like, hey, waitress, can you, can you come do this? Oh, I, I would, just, I, I just would, got my nails done or whatever. I would like do this in the booth if they asked to do that. I just like cover my face. Like I don't want to be here. Okay. I don't want to be. here. I guess here. it I is a little here. different, but yeah. I, no. Okay, so you would expect them to put their cart back, but if they didn't, you wouldn't be like, what the? No, nah, I could, I could care less. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. The next one is doesn't like sports. So again, not yeah, not I like. Okay, this is not like hates sports. Just like isn't into them. I don't really follow. Kind of. Yeah. Sure. Okay. The next one is has kids, kid or kids. How many flags can I hold up? So before you hold up the flag, think about how old we are. Mm -hmm. It's not very. The odds aren't high to find. I love your unborn child, but I hate kids. I'm just gonna say that. Okay. So what, <laughs> if that if that helps, <laughs> what if you found like the the perfect girl, and you guys were talking for like a month, and it was just like better than I didn't anything know after a month. Yeah, like better than anything you could anticipated. Uh, she does like sports. She does like animals. She returns the shopping cart, but she hasn't told me within a month that she has a kid or kids. It no. just never came up. Disagree. Okay, it would have it would have come up even before that, even if she didn't mean it to. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, I get you. No, 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 no. All right, so say she has no I kids. I want nothing to do with them. Say she has no kids. Okay. But lives at home. How old is she? My age? Yeah. As Why old she as, you would, as young as you would date. Well, so Why that's, she... before we get there, is there any immediate red flags? 
Uh, no, not necessarily. Like, are there's you, a lot of stuff you, uh, that could lead to that. You're reserving judgment. Yeah, yeah, because there's a, there's a lot of circumstances that could okay. lead to that. Yeah, I, I was hesitant to put that one down because I know there's a lot of circumstances, but I didn't know if you would be, like, off the bat. Like, no. The next one I got is has a lot of male friends. Sure. Okay. The last one is goes to therapy. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Therapy's healthy. Like you. You're an easygoing guy. What's going on with Tinder these days? Sloots and girls with kids. It's about all you get. Have any of them resulted in anything? Dates? I just think that's- Dates, to, yeah. So when we, we'd we go golf and we'd hit the, the 19th hole and you'd be yeah. swiping and I'm like- Yeah. So, so I date, but I don't pursue. Does that make sense? Nope. I'm going to need you to elaborate. I just, I, uh, I don't, so the way I think of it is, would I want to date me? Like, outside of me, would I want to date Chris? Okay. I wouldn't. I need. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I need, I need more than that. I, I just, I prefer. Because that, that, whatever you want to call that, whatever you just, what's it called when you like, uh, when you're like in a play and. Are you going? Like the whole stage clears and you're like the only one there and you're like talking to the audience, but you're talking to yourself at the same time. There's like a term for that. Like an outer like, body? No, there's like a whole, it's like. Monologue? Uh, uh, something like that. But there's, I think in playwright, there's like a specific term for it. But that well, sounds that like, t- term whatever is. you just said, sounds like that for okay. like a, a self-help book. Like, would I want to date me? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's that's one of the ways I think of it is, like, if I was a girl, would, it, would, would I want him as a boyfriend? And in my mind, I go, nah. So that that leads me to that train of thought because it's like, well, maybe I should change. But, like, what does right. that have to do with your dating scene? Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Like, what does what that thought lead in relation to my question what does that thought lead to um just not having time for it well i have time for it not wanting to make time for it i think is a better way of saying it but shouldn't you leave that decision to them no because i don't want it but you your argument was you don't think they would want it so i don't think if i was a female i'd be like i want to date him right right but it's not that's not on you to make Right. So At sense. the same time, I also don't want a commitment. Okay. So I think in my mind, it blends together into this, like, it's best for both to just not. Okay. I don't like it. Yeah, you should talk to my mom. Yeah, if you I, do, am I going to see I've, any grandkids in my life? She's talked to well, Last time they were down, she was asking, so when's Chris going to die? Oh, David. Like, I don't know. Just, it's, it's. It's going to be at your freaking wedding. Do you? It's going to be that times 40. I should have her give a speech. You should better tell her now. And <laughs> You should better. That was a good sentence. You should better tell but her I, now, David. I, I want her to direct it at you, though. Yeah. Good luck. So I, I get what you're saying, but I don't. So, like, I, mean, the, I know. I don't end personally of it? know, but I know of, like, attorneys that work, like, 80 hours a week. Oh, sure. Live, and they're married. Happy they marriages. kids. At the end of the day, I don't want a commitment. Just don't want it. But what if you find someone that has... So why... Let's start here. Why don't you want the commitment? Because you want to come home from work. You want to watch your movies. You want to do this. You want to do that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I want... what if you found someone... That wants that to do that? also wanted to do those things. Like, I just want to come home from work and veg out on the couch and catch up on this series and watch a new movie and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, but then eventually they're going to want to do stuff they want to do and I don't want to do it. No, but you do because you want them to do no, stuff no, they no, want to no. do so you can continue to do stuff you want to do. You have no, no, that no. individuality. I'm too selfish for a relationship. I do not want to do, hey, let's go grocery shopping. No, I really don't want to right now. That's why That's why they got Instacart. We don't have to do all that bullshit anymore. We sit <laughs> on the couch. so expensive. <laughs> we watch new series and that's what we do. Let's, uh, I'm such a, I mean, I could find, like when I'm not at home, and like I'm in like my work and like my professional career, I'm such an extrovert kind of person, but it's all for work and to progress my growth and my pay and to increase all that stuff. And as soon as I get home, don't even look at me. Permit, yeah. <laughs> don't yell, even. 
You yell at the paint for being too yeah, yeah. exposed? You texted me? I'll respond in three weeks. All right. Says. Okay. I just don't want it. I don't want it. And some people so do, why, some people don't. So why are you on those apps? Why is anyone on those apps, David? The fuck. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Well, not all the apps, but some in particular. So there's, I'm on four. See okay. if we can name. See if we can name them. Are they all straight? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go with, I feel like it's easy, no? Go ahead. Tinder. Yeah. Well, I said a yes. I heard yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bumble. Bumblebee tuna. Yeah. Hinge. Yeah. The next one's like a little, I don't know. I, th- I don't think I've been on it and it's an old one, but I'm, I'm still on it. Think of, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what I had. Valentine's Day. A little older school. Okay, Cupid. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. I got those four. I'll ever use that one. Yeah, Is I get a lot of fish still a thing. Oh, POS. I know some friends of ours used to catfish another friend of ours on that app. On Plenty of Fish. Yeah, we'll talk about that offline. So when we're talking about our friends, it's pretty <laughs> safe to assume that any of the parties involved is a shitty person. That's what I that's what I tell uh for say, some fiance of them. all the time. I don't like and befriend these people because they're good people. I do it because they're good friends. I know yeah, if I'm yeah. ever in a pickle, I can call them and they'll be there. Well, and that's the other side of my thought process is when I am out and I'm in that professional capacity and I'm doing all this is like, I could be a good boyfriend, fiance, husband, dad. I could definitely do it. Okay. I don't want to do it. Okay. And it's pretty, to me, it's pretty cut and dry. To my mom and you, it's like, but why? It's no, yeah, it more so to your mom. I just, I gotta ask the question A, because your mom's gonna ask me the question, B, because that's the she topic done of this episode. Question. Yeah, and I don't ever have an answer. Good, so it'd be nice to have one for her. Good, B, that's oh, the you topic can tell her because he doesn't want to. Yeah, but you know, moms, how do you know that? Well, why doesn't he want to? So that'll be that. All right, well, I guess we'll finish up with this, uh game here and let it lead into whatever. Okay. The game for me or for both of us? Nah, for you. Okay. I want to know if you can tell me the top five richest couples. Jay-Z, Beyonce. They're number six on the list. Megan and the Prince. They are not on this list, That's... but I only I only took the top ten. I think they were like 13. Who the f- Um, what? Is Drake married? <laughs> So, you had Beyonce and Jay Z at six at one point eight billion. Is Oprah married? She is. Oprah's number three with okay. Stedman Graham at three point five one billion. How have I never heard Stedman Graham in my life? The same way you've probably never heard of either of number four. Well, what the fuck is this? Or listen? either of the spouses of one and two. Um, Bezos and somebody. They're not married anymore. Elon and whatever her name is. No. No. Bill Gates. What? So it's... it's Steve Harvey's? <laughs> we got a good one for you today. <laughs> so we got actor slash actress, because I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Producer. Oprah. Mm, don't know what they are. And then singer. Taylor Producer Swift should be married. easy. I mean, they, you, you, you could probably name two producers off the back. One's... Michael Bay, the other one's this guy. James Cameron. No, the other Steven one. Spielberg. There you go. Steven he's Spielberg. He's a director. And, he's not a producer. Whatever. They're the same thing in my eyes. Him and, okay. him and Kate Capshaw, 5.4 billion. What number are they? Five? They're number two. Number two. So I have Spielberg at two and Oprah oh, at three? Correct. And one number one's a singer, you said? Number one is a actor and or... Well, not and or actor or actress. I don't want to give it away. Uh, five's a singer. Four, I don't know. Oh, the Rock. Who, who the? No. For no? who? For what? The actor. No. Uh, I'm trying to think of a clue. What, what was four and five clues? Four, I don't know what either of them are. Okay. Um, but I've heard of them. I don't know. Okay. I'll just give it to you because yeah, I don't even know how to give you a clue. Number four is Holly Vance and Nick Candy. 
Nope, no clue. At, at two point two billion. Good for them. Holly Candy. Yeah, so you got one and five. Um so one, one is the actor actress, and then what's five? Five is a singer. I'll, singer. I'll help you out with one. It's an actress. Actress. And I, I don't, she's got a French husband. At least it sounds very French. So maybe he's the breadwinner, because she's great, but I don't think she's this great. Is it Meryl Streep? No. Nah. And number five. She, yeah. Think about a Super Bowl. Think a about. A Super Bowl. Think about, if I'm not mistaken, a Carolina Panthers Super Bowl. What was their title? What are they? What do they do? A singer. So a I'm pretty sure. Show. Pretty sure it was. All right. So think about the most memorable slash controversial. Katy Perry. Nope. Memorable slash. Oh, freaking uh, titty popping out. Who was it? It was um. I'm sorry, Miss. Yeah. What's her first name? Why can't I think of her first name? Um, Janet. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Godly. Number five is Janet Jackson and Wasam Al Mana. At, I like Wasam Al My Sushi. At, well, this doesn't make any sense. Maybe it mistyped. So Beyonce and Jay Z are at six with one point eight million billion, and this says Janet and Wasam are at five with one point one eight billion. So I was right. I, yeah, I get. It. I don't. Know. Number five. Copy. And number paste one the list. is an actress. Correct. Is the number one? What? Um. Okay. Would you yeah. say she's below the age of 40? No. Okay. I can't um, say that for sure, but I personally wouldn't. I can give you an age. 57. Dang, I really thought it was. Um, I told you no. I know. And her husband's wanna... a no-name? Like, I would not have heard of her husband. Uh, or, we wouldn't have. Wife. I'm sure a lot of people have. So, you really like Puss in Boots? Oh, Salma Hayek? Yeah. What? Her and Francois Henry Penault. At seven point two billion, you fact checking me? The fuck is Henry Francois? <laughs> he is the CEO of Caring, president of French-based multinational corporation in luxury goods. Owns a brand. Oh, he owns Gucci, Balenciaga. Oh, well, there you go. Bottega Veneta, Creed, so and every, Alexander McQueen. Oh my God! Where everybody else on this list shops, he owns that. Just Gucci and Balenciaga alone. Oh, how about that? Wait, that guy? What? <laughs> Are you see what he looks like? No, I didn't look it. It's like a French asshole. Is his name Henry Francois? Francois Henry. He it always makes like me it. think of the Selma Hayek South Park episode. He looks <laughs> like a... Uh, God, she's so just... He looks like a... Uh, I ain't saying she's a gold digger. I mean, she don't need the money. I know, but... Oh, he she's looks 57? Like a, that's what I just told you. He looked like a Kmart version of uh, that uh, that one old dude. It's in that Fractured movie. Give me a Selma Hayek movie. Like, give me three. Hold or on, let two. me look up this. No, you're going to cheat. No, I'm looking up who this, uh, this fucking Henry Francois looks like. Oh, no. Fractured. Who's the guy I'm thinking of? The old guy. In Fractured? Fractured. Is that a movie? Like, yeah, there's like six movies called Fractured. I can't find which one it is. I think I had you watch it. It's the one my dad told me about. Like, well, this might be it. Was Selma Hayek and No, I don't think she was. Uh, Dick Clump. No, this isn't that either. Who was in Spanglish? That wasn't her. She was in a movie with Adam Sandler, though, right? Two of them. This one and then the second one. It's not a... It's those fucking movies I hate. It's with, with all Kev, of Adam Sandler's with Kevin friends. Kevin James. Mm-hmm. The, something about parents or... And Chris Rock and David Spade and Rob yeah, Schneider. F- uh, and they're not kids, but they're... It's like good... Good. No, no. It begins adult. with a G. They're not Good. kids. They're grown ups. Yeah. I, those are, I, that's like one of my <laughs> least favorite movies ever. So I was going to say, I thought you were going to get is Wild Wild West. That's what I thought you were going to get. I haven't seen that movie in like 20 years. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. What about him? Her <laughs> husband looks like a Kmart version of Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> I'll be he fair. Like he, a, he looks he better like a than blue Anthony light Hopkins. Special. Yeah, but he looked like a blue light special Anthony Hopkins. He just doesn't... When I thought Salma Hayek, I thought it would be like a uh, Antonio Banderas, like some like suave Spaniard. But no, it's just this fucking old Frenchman who's a CEO. <laughs> I need you to turn your volume up and click the link that I just sent in the chat. Look, I saw videos of him just yesterday. Training. He's going to fuck him up. It was like Jake Paul training, and he's like... And then it was like Tyson training, and he's like... 
I hope he does. I hope he Look, fucking murders him. Tyson doesn't have, what is the normal boxing match? Like eight, ten rounds? Like if it doesn't go any kind of 12. KO? Twelve. Tyson, after, f if it makes it to four, is going to fuck him up real bad. So the thing that I saw that, because I was like very on the fence about it, because I was like, well, you know, Jake's younger. He's got more stamina, this and that. And the reason they're doing it is for money, obviously, because it's easily by far going to be the most streamed boxing okay. match in history. It's going to be the record by a thousand because it's streaming on Netflix. So a thousand percent. But what's going to happen is so I guess Mike Tyson has a famous quote that says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. He's going to be there strictly to make money. And he's going to feel like he's losing or take a wrong hit. And it's going to, because that dude's not right in the head. So he's going to, it's going to like alter him mentally where he's just going to get fucking hungry well, and he's destroy a big, him. Yeah. And, and you've seen him like eat like just handfuls of caps of mushrooms on like Joe Rogan and stuff like that. Have yeah. you seen those well, videos? Not just that though. Like he's going to go into it like, okay, I agreed that I'm just going to make money with this dude because And then we're, feel wronged and right, like go he's off. Not, not even feel wrong. Just he's going to. Even if it's like a planned punch to the face or whatever, it's just gonna like fuck something up in his head, and he's gonna see red, and he's just gonna fucking destroy. Well, him. yes, and I'll be honest. Give me any boxer in their prime in the history of boxing, I'm taking Mike Tyson over Ali. Yes, some would he argue he's the greatest. Would punish him. He would punish him, and I don't think it's because of pure fighting technique. He's, I think he's literally a tsunami wave, and you have no. You can't get out of the way. He's yeah. just going to destroy you. And you just have to eat it. You have to eat it. He's, And I can't wait for Jake Paul to fucking hopefully get concussed. And I just hope it happens. Just to eat it and eat it and eat it. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, shit. Two-hour uh, relationship podcast. That was good. We I think we got about 45 minutes worth of relationship in there. <laughs> and about 45 minutes of got to cut it. And, uh, that's Yeah, that's, I don't know. Where do we even see the time here? Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Well, next time we see you guys, I'll uh, uh, officially uh, be uh, 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 able to uh, claim somebody uh, 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 on my taxes. <laughs> and soon after that, another one. I'll be able to claim <laughs> another one on my insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys All for joining the mouths us. To feed. All the mouths. Um, thanks for always liking and subscribing, following, commenting, whatever it is you got to do. Um, if you want to see or hear anything, just let us know in the comments, obviously. And uh, we'll see you guys and next time. And we're still waiting for somebody to come on and talk about why Tom Brady is a piece of shit. By not all means. A piece of shit, but why we will literally he's not do the best ever. And pay for whatever it takes to get you on here. So if you want to do you, it. If you want to come on and talk about why you think Tom Brady's the best, I will We. We will what's the word? Gladly. I'm here? No. We will uh we'll just go with make you feel the wrath that Tyson's gonna make Jake Paul feel. Which would be the truth. Correct. Also, <laughs> uh, my bad to everybody that paid like 50 grand for Mac Jones rookie cards. See you guys. <laughs>